Hello. I'm Peter Ernest, Executive Director of the International Spy Museum here in Washington, D.C. Many of you know me from our previous programs and broadcasts and podcasts. This is a very special day, however. This is September 5th, 2014, the day before uh, the launch of a book that uh, I have been working on uh, with a co-author, and the name of it is Harry Potter and the Art of Spying. As many of you certainly know, my background is many, many years in CIA, where I did carry out uh, clandestine activities, uh, covert action, and other, uh, let's say, operations associated with the art of espionage itself. Uh, today, however, uh, we wanted to give you a little flavor of the book, which is going to be officially launched on September 6th which is tomorrow, and it'll be launched here at the International Spy Museum. So I hope a number of you are able to attend. Uh, my co-author is Lynn Bowie. Lynn Bowie is an author of uh, an espionage, a very good espionage story, and also an, an attorney. I should say you're an attorney and mm -hmm. an author uh, living in Montana. So, uh, Lynn, I know uh, this is not your first time to Washington, uh, but uh, welcome to Washington again. It's great to have you here for this occasion. Well, thank you very much, Peter. It's great to be here, and I look forward to uh, the launch of the book. And um, as, as you mentioned, uh, one of the things I did when I worked on the, the spy novel, Mission to Char, was go all over Russia and Siberia using spycraft. So we get to use spycraft in everyday life, and if you happen to be writing a book and doing research, uh, that's how I used all the, the tools of the trade, just, uh, uh, and it was a lot of fun. So I look forward to being here, and I was very fortunate. My uh, twin daughters came along, and so we're seeing, they're seeing Washington, D.C. for the first time, and we look forward to the launch. It would be, actually, it would be a thrill to see Washington for the first time, <laughs> because you're always seeing it on television and the movies. You see the White House and Congress and so forth. So I think, uh, I think it's wonderful you brought the the girls here and the, they have a great time while they're here. Lynn, let's, let's cut to the quick here. Great. Uh, Harry Potter uh, and the Art of Spying, this idea of looking at Harry Potter specifically with what is in there about spying? One doesn't, one doesn't hear about the book. Harry Potter, and certainly I, I know many people who are just real aficionados of Harry Potter. And when I mention the book and I mention the subject, they sort of look puzzled and they're thrown a little bit off by art of spying. This idea really came out of your head. Could you comment on, on the genesis of the idea? Certainly. Um, I am, of course, very much in the Harry Potter series. And when I was rereading uh, book five, Order of the Phoenix, it occurred to me that throughout the book, there's all this spy craft. There's use of codes. There's uh, coins that tell you when meetings are at. There's letters where you're using open code to snuffles. Uh, and then, of course, you have the best double agent, I think, ever in literature, and that's Severus Snape. And so um, I, I thought, geez, this is all about at least an aspect of this, all this book, all the series, is about spycraft. So I thought, why not sit down, go through it, list all the spycraft, and then luckily you were kind enough to join me in this wonderful endeavor. I'll be very interested to hear uh, Rowling's comments on the book. I hope someone <laughs> brings it to her attention. <clears throat> because really the book, the, the series, is set up. I mean, it's made for spycraft. I mean, the series is set up with conflict as a constant all through the series. I mean, even as we meet Harry Potter and we realize and, and we learn that he's in conflict with his own, uh, with his own uh, godparents. I guess they're his godparents in the series. Or uh, No, it's his uncle and aunt. Yeah, his, his, uh, yeah, they're taking care of him. But then, of course, we have the conflict with the Ministry of Magic and the politics. And yes, throughout the series is just uh, it's, uh, the use that not only are they acting operationally to try to find horcruxes or whatever, but they're also throughout the series using intelligence analysis. They're trying to figure out which is the horcrux, for example. Uh, who's a spy? Who's a good guy? Who's a bad guy? Um, so yes, uh, there's a uh, spy craft uh, throughout and uh, uh, throughout the series. Oh yeah, no, all the items you mentioned, but I, I was going right back mm -hmm. to the beginnings of yes. the story, 
where we meet Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. And if we don't know what the book is about, after all, the books came out one by one. They didn't come out as a completed yeah. series. So people read the first volume and learned and met Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. uh, this, by the way, uh, I have to tell you, when I started the series, um, I, my early years uh, were in Great Britain. I was born in Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. Uh, my father was an American vice consul. My mother was English. So the, the sort of the atmospherics of the book, uh, whether it's tea time or, the, <laughs> or, or even the way of speaking and so forth, was very familiar to me. And so getting into the story was, was a delight for me. It almost took me back to those childhood years. And, <clears throat> and you, you see he's in conflict uh, with, they're his guardians, really. Yes. They've chosen to take care of him. And then he's invited to go to school at Hogwarts. But that whole setup is a setup of conflict. I mean, in other words, the things that lend themselves often to spying mm -hmm. or to espionage are things like civil wars yep. or what's going on today in many parts of the world where we see nations in conflict, mm -hmm. uh, groups uh, with, re with religious beliefs Absolutely. in conflict. And whenever you have that between peoples, then you have spying and espionage and double agents and all the things that we associate with it. Well, his books are fraught. These books are fraught with these things. Absolutely. Rowling created a world in which there was this kind of conflict. Absolutely. And mystery and cover stories. I mean, in the first book, <clears throat> we don't know how his parents died. Supposedly, according to his aunt and uncle, they died in a car accident. Well, we find out quite soon when Hagrid tells him the truth that uh, they were wizards and they were killed by Voldemort. And so, yes, uh, so we have conflict, mystery, cover stories. Uh, and the beauty of the first book is, of course, we're slowly, like an onion, peeling off layer by layer of the truth about Harry Potter and his scar. It's interesting because <clears throat> Harry Potter evolves. I mean, it's very much the story of a coming of age of this, of this uh, young man and his friends, Ron yes. Weasley and yeah. Hermione and so forth. <clears throat> And he comes of age in a very natural way because he makes blunders in the book. He gets <laughs> things wrong. He lies to people. I mean, he does yeah. so many of the things we associate with being a young adult, trying to Absolutely. be a big person. And, uh, and so it's so easy for all of us to say, yes, that's, that's how it was. Yeah. And, uh, but the thing that struck me is that Harry evolves. He has a leadership quality to him which comes out as the book goes along. Absolutely. Yeah, but he also has, and Hermione certainly has this sort of analytical ability, the ability to, to understand things in such a way that they can, they can see things that are not evident. Absolutely, and he has a good judge of people and characters. One of the first things he does is when he meets uh, Draco Malfoy, he makes a decision that this is the type of person I don't want to be friends with. I'm going to be friends with Ron and Hermione. I'm not, uh, you know, literally, Draco says, you know, you need to be careful who you hang around with. And he says, I think I can make that decision myself. So um, at a very young age, this young man at, at age 11 is making very important decisions about you know, who to be with, uh, what counts, uh, and yeah, and it's a, it's a lovely coming of age story. You know, uh, uh, <clears throat> the more we talk about it, the more we sort of uncover other things, <laughs> uh, because I'm thinking there are books now about Sherlock Holmes and how he thinks and so forth and so on. Well, you mentioned <clears throat> how did his parents die? Well, he doesn't know. And then he begins, I mean, he begins unfolding that and he learns how they died. And, and why they died. And that's very much part of what's at the root of what is, is the spying and the duplicity and so forth all, th all through the book. But the other thing that you bring to mind is with Malfoy and so forth in this book, um, you know, there's a lot of attention being paid today to bullying. Absolutely. And how to deal with bullying. And this is a classic story of how to deal with Absolutely. bullying. Yeah. And yet we don't think of it that way. You, we, you and I looked at it and said, well, what, what does it say about espionage? <laughs> of course. Well, and the nice thing about the book is not only do we go into a, a review of the Harry Potter stories, uh, story, especially the fifth book, Order of the Phoenix, but we also put in your war stories, real true live war stories of you as a, a, as a covert operative in Greece uh -huh. and other places, uh, me getting to places in Russia that I shouldn't get to. Uh, and we put in a lot of real world things, uh, 
probably a thousand different references to Muggle history. That, so the book is more than just a review of Harry Potter. <clears throat> it's a review, uh, if not an introduction, to spycraft and the history of spying. Well, <clears throat> the one thing I would say about what you've just touched on is I talked to somebody the other day who had read an advanced copy. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, you put in all this other stuff about <laughs> World War II and your career and, and Lynn's, Lynn's adventures in, in, in the Soviet Union in, in Russia. He said, but the reason I enjoyed it was you related everything to Harry Potter. Yes. They weren't just gratuitous. Yeah, yeah. Oh, let's put that in yeah. and let's put yeah. that in. Tied in, They absolutely. were all about what was going on with Harry Potter and why it was relevant to the story. Certainly. So there's times where Harry's working on a code, and then we'll discuss some different codes. As a matter of fact, there's two codes in the book that J.K. Rowling put, one uh, in the first book on the top of the mirror of Erised, and another one in the fifth book where Harry gets into the Ministry of Magic by using the visitor's entrance, dialing in a number. Well, J.K. Rowling put those codes in the book, and she doesn't tell you how to figure them out. So we, we delve into codes, for example. So when we get to that point, we mention what that is. That's a code. We tell the readers how to figure out what it means. Now, just say that again. What were the two codes again that you one, just mentioned? One of them is on the top of the Mirror of Erised. The, the Mirror first, of Mirror of Erised, Erised right. the first book, I believe on page 208 or 209. Right. Uh, and that's a full English sentence, and you just have to figure out how to break the code to translate that into an English sentence. And then the other one she has is in the fifth book, the phone number, the 62442, that Mr. Weasley dials in, and Harry, being a good spy, remembers it. So when he goes to rescue Sirius later in the book with his friends flying on the Thestrals, he remembers that number, punches it in. That number represents a single word in English. So what you're telling me, this is also a, uh, a, a, uh, an instruction book on how to be a spy. Absolutely. <laughs> and and okay. luckily, since we have a real spy to help us, uh, we, we got to spend a lot of time together going through this book line by line, uh, going through the entire Potter series, figuring out all the spycraft, which then you and I were able to, you know, delve into in some detail. Well, Lynn, I have to tell you uh, that our collaborative effort, my working with you, and a lot of it was long distance from Montana to Washington <laughs> and Washington to Montana, that we did spend some time together. But I think working on this book has been an absolute delight. I and I can't thank you enough for uh, coming up with the idea and uh, inviting me to be part of the effort. Uh, I think it's, I'm delighted with how it's turned out. And uh, from the early reports, I'm getting that people are enjoying it. So it's, it's just been a pleasure to work wow. with you. And for me, too. I mean, it has just been an absolute blast. Uh, we've had such a, a great working relationship. Uh, and just a few weeks ago, we were in Orlando at a, a conference with 5,000 Harry Potter fans. And uh, we gave a presentation. And it was, I mean, every aspect of this has been an absolute joy. And, uh, and it's fun. Uh, and there's so many things that you can't tell us about, but I've been able to pull out some that we can put in the book. And, and of course, we had to have it cleared by CIA and, for me, Department of Defense. And so, uh, but uh, to make sure we weren't accidentally saying something we shouldn't. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. And uh, I look forward to our launch tomorrow. Uh, and I, I love your reference to uh, uh, LeakyCon. They were not 5,000 screaming Potter fans, <laughs> but many of them were in costume, so we got to see Snape and Dumbledore and so on, including your own uh, rendition of Dumbledore. Oh, so, and in the reader screeter, you bet. It was lovely. <laughs> thanks so much for coming out here for the launch, and I hope some of you were able to uh, join us tomorrow here at the International Spy Museum. Uh, the launch will be 1 to 3, and uh, there will be judging of the costumes. So look forward to seeing you, and if you are not able to make it, Please enjoy Harry Potter and the Art of Spotting.